What's the word, y'all? Welcome back. I am currently in a health and safety protocol, so I'm quarantined in my office, and, and my voice is feeling a little bit better than it has been in the last couple days, so I'm here to give y'all a video. Every NBA team's top three trade deadline targets. I love things like this where it doesn't give you, like, it doesn't tell you what the package is, but it's like, hmm, if I was in control of this team, these are the people I'd be calling for. So shout out to Greg Schwartz. I don't know if I'm going to agree or disagree with everything he says in this, but I'm always here for good BR article. Let's get into it. Starting off with, oh, wait, never mind. They tell you that you get a dream target, a realistic target, and a sneaky target. Not the first player you think of, nor a household name, but one that feels a need or could be. A, okay, all right, let's get into it. Atlanta Hawks. Ben Simmons, 100%. There was already rumors about them potentially making moves. John Collins and trade talks, getting Ben Simmons. But what I woke up to this morning is the fact that uh, a Daryl Morey company is like, hey, we'd rather keep Ben Simmons until the offseason. And then potentially trade him for James Harden on a little sign of trade or, or see what James Harden wants to do this offseason and use that money that we might get from a Toby trade and then a Ben Simmons trade to get... I don't really know. But I've said many a times before on this channel, I, I'm not in the... I don't know. I just don't want to talk about Ben Simmons unless the trade has actually happened. But here we are talking about Ben Simmons because it's hard not to considering everything that's coming out about him. But the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. Um, realistic target is Marcus Smart. And the sneaky target is Gary Harris. Gary Harris, I feel like, can help a lot of teams right now. But that $20 million tag that's associated with him makes it harder to trade for him. Um, just because, again, $20 million is a number that you got to make up. And the Atlanta Hawks do have money. You know what I'm saying? They do have, or not money, but they have tradable contracts or people in that realm of 20 million but wouldn't it be more of a lateral move to trade one of their 20 million contract 20 million dollar contracts for gary harris i don't really know next we have the boston celtics shout out to jason tatum last night for a little or yesterday morning slash evening afternoon for a little 50 piece and you know what i was gonna do so last video we did we reacted to the boston celtics subreddit when they were at their lowest of the low and i wanted to go in there again today to see how they reacted to a 50 piece from Jason Tatum. But you know what? I started to film that video and the subreddit was kind of kind of like cool. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't like they weren't super, super high because they I think they realized it's just one random game in um in January. And though a 50 piece is amazing and not trying to discredit that, it's not anything to be like, oh, we're back. You know what I'm saying? Um, but look at this. Boston Celtics dream option would be John Collins. Again, I don't know how you get there, so that's why it is a dream. Realistic is Eric Gordon. I like that a lot, man. I, I'm one, uh, I'm 97% sure Eric Gordon is going to get traded this um, this trade deadline. Just don't know what the package is or what team he's getting traded to. He's making about $17, $18 million a year, which ain't that bad for the type of production you might get from him. And the Houston Rockets might be looking again like, hey, a lottery protect the first or two seconds or a potential young player that um, might not have done much, but we we see a little bit in him. And the Boston Celtics got a lot of players, young players, that have not done much, but we might see a little bit in him. Aaron E. Smith, Romeo Langford, uh, Patrick, uh, oh, not Patrick, Peyton Pritchard, a lot of those guys, and Ben McLemore. Ben McLemore just had a really good game the other night. Next, Brooklyn Nets. Jacopoto would be the dream because, again, they're missing that front court depth and that front court good guy. And Jacopoto is one of the most underrated bigs in the league, if not the most underrated big in the league. Doran Finney Smith is realistic. Mike Muscala is a sneaky. I think Mike Muscala can help a lot of teams out. Um, low key, I'm not looking forward to playing against him tonight as a Bulls fan because it just feels like that second tier backup center role always dominates the Bulls. Yesterday, it was, um, it was Mo Wagner. And today it might be Mike Muscala. Charlotte Hornets, Miles Turner. I think Miles Turner is a dream and realistic. I think he fits both of these. Uh, Nerlens Noel would be really good there. Nerlens Noel, I watched him yesterday. Um, Knicks versus, I forget exactly who it was against. And that lets you know that I wasn't really invested that much. Um, and he got a couple steals where he was just pick, picking pockets, picking pockets, picking pockets. And Nerlens Noel is a really good defensive player. Um, so him on that team would help them out a lot because they're missing that defensive center and then robin lopez i guess would be sneaky as well chicago bulls the dream option would be jeremy grant yeah i guess so uh but if all the reports about jeremy grant is true is that he want to keep his big role or he wants all this money eh, you know um but there it is with larry Nance jr a guy that we had uh, part of the trade with Derrick Jones Jr. He got set to the Portland Trail Blazers, and we kept Derrick Jones Jr. If we could get both of them, it would be kind of weird. Or maybe we're trading Derrick Jones Jr. Wait, I have no idea. Um, but Larry Nance will help us because we don't have a power forward at all in the roster that's healthy at the moment. And Nicholas Batum, I saw somebody on Twitter, and I think it was my guy Will G, um, who put together a trade package that had Markeith Morris and Nicholas Batum coming to Chicago for some pieces. And I was intrigued. 
you know, we need power forwards, and that is two, those are two power forwards that I feel like can can uh, complete the roles that the Chicago Bulls need. Next, Cleveland Cavaliers, dream option, Brandon Ingram. I've said this before. If they could somehow get Brandon Ingram, that'd be great. But again, I don't think the Pelicans are selling. But if they were able to get Brandon Ingram on the Cavaliers, GGs. Not saying that they're going to win a championship or nothing, but like, it would just be fun for me to watch as a guy that's already watching a lot of Cavaliers games to start off with. Uh, Karis Avert is definitely more realistic. And Sneaky Gorn Dragic. I mean, I don't know what's really happening with Rondo. I think he played a few games, and I don't know if he got injured or anything, but he hasn't really been playing much since the first couple games of the season, so getting that point guard would help. Um, next, Dallas Mavericks, Christian Wood for sure, Buddy Hill. I guess they need more shooting, and Kemba Walker is a sneaky option. Hmm. Kemba Walker is a sneaky option. I mean, the Dallas Mavericks have been playing a lot better recently. Definitely been playing a lot better recently. Um, okay. Dream option would be Derek White for the Nuggets. They just traded for Brent Forbes. So let's go call the Spurs up again and say, hey, we want the other guard. Realistic is Robin Lopez. Okay. And Snicky will be Dennis Schroeder. Now, I'm a, Dennis Schroeder is another guy that I think is going to get traded this trade deadline. Uh, just because salary, uh, ta uh, luxury tax, things and stuff like that, that I don't really know the the ins and outs of but i've definitely seen a lot of people that i do know understand the cba and all of these things say that hey dennis Schroeder is probably going to get traded because it is tax and ownership and yada 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 so i'm going to believe in what they're saying next number nine detroit basketball you know what's funny i've seen mo bamba photoshopped in a detroit piston uniform i've seen patrick williams photoshopped in a detroit piston uniform and i've actually seen kyle kuzma too him being from the the michigan area um Dream option. I don't know if that's that much of a dream. I think it's realistic that they could get to get Mobamba, but they be have to be willing to part ways with maybe a first. And I don't know if you uh, maybe that's why it's not realistic. I don't know. Um, and they already got Isaiah Stewart. How much do you believe in Isaiah Stewart versus Mobamba? Do you play them together? I don't really know. But Patrick Williams, that is again the Jeremy Grant trade if that was gonna go through. Ken Rich Williams is a dream option for the Golden State Warriors. Ken Rich Williams is my dream option for the Chicago Bulls. That's all I need to say. I love it. Uh, Michael Scott will be kind of nice with the Warriors because you don't need him to play crazy defense. You kind of got the mind to be a list of doing somewhat of that role right now. And he stretches the floor and opens up so many more options for the offense for Steph Curry for him to get back to where he needs to be. And then uh, Clay Thompson to get back to where he needs to be. It just gives you another option on the offense side of the ball. And Marcus Smart, what does that trade look like? Now, this is one that I wish they gave us an option. Golden State should check on Marcus Smart's availability, especially since the Celtics seem to be interested in getting below the luxury tax line. See, that's what I said about Dennis Schroeder. Um, but yeah, him getting added to the team to add defense will be kind of nasty. Houston Rockets, I feel like Ben Simmons is going to be on a lot of teams' dream options because I think he could really help a lot of teams. And if you're a rebuilding team like the Houston Rockets, at, what, 24 years old, I think Ben Simmons is. He's still relatively young. He can be one of the focal points of your rebuild. Um, Derek White, why would they want Derek White? How old is Derek White? Like 25, 26? Why would they want him? Rui Hachimura is one that I would really like to see there. Only because the Washington Wizards have so many pieces and they don't really know what direction they want to go in. Like I was saying, uh, Rui Hachimura, I think he he's a good candidate that I think a lot of teams should be calling on if you're a rebuilding team and looking for um, some youth with some potential. It's just because they have so many pieces. I was listening to No Dunks this morning and they were talking about the last Washington Wizards game which was against the Boston Celtics where Jay Tatum at 50 and they were playing 11, min 11 players in the first half which is too much of a rotation and they still lost. So um, you're looking for a team that might be willing to free up some quality NBA players to so Washington Wizards could be that. Next, the Indiana Pacers. Gordon Hayward would be the dream option. Not in my dream. That's a nightmare for me. As, as somebody that just wants to see the Pacers just bottom out, get some good draft um, picks, because I think it was um, they had one pick that was in the top 10 in the last 20-ish years. One. They need more. Gordon Hayward is just a, a maybe gets them a little bit better, but that's still not enough for, for me. Um, and I'm not an Indiana Pacers fan, so I'm not speaking for them, but I'm just saying in general for a team that, that every, all 30 NBA teams want to be to the point where they win a championship eventually, trading for Gordon Hayward does not help that. And and if it's not helping that even get to the next step to get to that point, then why are we doing it? And that's why I'm saying, um, nah, you, you've had a decade of being really solid, and I think your fans are okay if you take a few steps back because you have been so solid for such a long time. Like, there are organizations like the Bulls, that were so bad for five years, half a decade, that us being good or decent is good enough for our fan base right now. You've had that. And now they want to reset. Dorfinney Smith and Luke Kennard are the other ones. The Clippers, 
Jonas Valen and Lachunas. Ooh, now that's interesting. They also got Yusuf Nurkic here, who's on the last year of his deal. But you got um you got Kawhi and Paul George who might be out for the rest of the season. So trading for a guy on the last year of his deal might not be the smartest thing unless you get say like, hey, we're one hundred percent confident we can bring you back to next season. Now we got Nurkic and now we got um now we got PG and Kawhi together. I don't really know. And then Kemba Walker is a sneaky option. But I've been liking the way that Reggie Jackson has been playing personally. Um, is Kemba Walker better than that? Or maybe you're just looking for depth at the point guard position? I don't really know. Next, the Lakers. Eric Gordon, Kenridge Williams. Stay away from Kenridge Williams. He's a future bull. And then Lou Williams coming back would be funny. Um, I don't have much to say about the Lakers. I don't know what direction they go in because I don't know how you make any of these trades happen. Unless, actually, if I'm going to use the Rockets, I'd be willing to trade Eric Gordon and, um, for that 2026 first round pick because low key, I'm a believer that the 2026 first round pick from the Lakers might be sneaky good because who knows who's going to be on this team in 2026. I would be like, yeah, I'll take that flyer. And it only cost me Eric Gordon and I'm trying to bottom out anyway. Sure. Give me that pick. Give me that pick. Next. Oh, we got a typo right here, by the way. They forgot the end in Kenrich. Uh, next, Jalen Brown is a dream option. Sure. Uh, Robert Covington and Marvin Bagley. I would have loved to see like Harrison Barnes in this realistic option too. Um, but hey, the Memphis Grizzlies, they're playing with house money right now. I don't know if there's a trade that they could do that you'd be like, oh, that sucks for them, you know? Miami Heat, Dorian Finney-Smith. No, they don't need any more of that, man. They're doing a hike. They're number one team in the East right now. They don't need no more good, long defensive wings that can also shoot the ball. They got enough of them. And they got a couple of them as their dream slash realistic. And Sneaky, this is buyout. This is by Paul Millsap, and I want him in Chicago, too. I want everybody in Chicago. Um, Milwaukee, Dream Options, Zell is Noel because they don't know what's going on. Oh, we don't know what's going on with Brooke Lopez. Doug McDermott gets another shooter, and Jalen Smith. That's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting to see Jalen Smith in one of these things. It's like a sneaky option for the Milwaukee Bucks. Now we got the Minnesota Timberwolves. OG Ananobi is the dream. Yeah, but you're not getting that. <laughs> you're not getting that. Larry Nance uh, is more realistic for sure. And then Jermichael Green. I have not heard a lot of Jermichael Green buzz. So to see him in one of these things is kind of interesting. Could he be potentially moved? I don't know how much of a role he's playing in Denver. But I, I know for sure Denver ain't looking at him as an untouchable piece. So yeah, call him up. Oh. Ooh. The dream option. De'Aaron Fox and Zion. And I'm thinking about next season. De'Aaron Fox and Zion will be kind of weird, but I'm here for weird. You know what I'm saying? I'm here for weird. Colin Sexton, okay. That's like, hey, if the um, if the Cavaliers and, the, and Colin Sexton don't think they can come to an agreement, even though he's just coming off a, a torn ACL, I'm pretty sure it was, hey, we'll we'll trade for him and give him the money. And then we can give them back Tomas Sadoransky, and we can give them back. Ooh, that sounds like a bad trade. <laughs> Actually, keep Colin Sexton if, if Tomas Sadoransky is the guy you get it back in return. Um, And Horn Tucker, who are you giving up in Horn Tucker trade? Um, I don't really know. Next, the New York Knicks, DeJounte Murray be the jury for sure. If I called him my boy Pierre and say, hey, um, you could get DeJounte Murray, he'd be like, trade everybody. Trade everything to get DeJounte Murray in New York. So, for sure. Um, Gordon Drogic is a more realistic option, but the sneaky thing is bringing Reggie Bullock back to the team. Okay, I don't know where the Knicks go. I would love to see the Knicks make a big-time move like a DeJounte Murray, but I just don't think that the Spurs are trying to do that. There's actually a report that was a rumor, not a report. I need to stop doing that. I would say report when I mean rumor. Because it is just a rumor saying that the Spurs will be willing to trade DeJounte this summer, but not at the trade deadline. So we'll see what happens there. Um, okay, see, Gary Trent Jr. Gary, people forget the great Gary Trent Jr. is still super young. I think he's just 23. I think his birthday was just a couple of days ago. He's still super young. So he will fit the timeline of Shea Gibbs, Alexander, Lou Dora, Josh Giddy, um, Mo Bamba. If I am the Thunder, I would 100% be willing to give up a first round pick for Mo Bamba. You got a million of them. I'm not saying give up your best first rounder. Don't give up this year's first rounder for yourself. But you got the first rounders from this team. From this team. From this backdoor trade that we forgot happened. I would be willing to give up a first round pick from Obama. Because you don't have any any big man prospects at the moment. Um, and they might be looking at Chet Holmgren or something. But like, let's go ahead and get Obama to get with Shea Gilles Alexander. Um, Serge Ibaka? Oh, that's because... They, this is another player that's almost 100% going to get traded, Serge Ibaka, because the Clippers save so much money. What, the Clippers save so much money if they trade Serge. Like, why would you not trade him at this moment? You know what I'm saying? It's not like he's killing the game or the team is doing anything with the two-star players getting out. So, sure, this is like, hey, we'll take on Serge Ibaka if you give us another pick or two. Um, Orlando Magic, Patrick Williams. What would they be giving us in exchange for Patrick Williams? I don't really know. That's why it's a dream. 
um, Jetty Osmond, then Kelly Oubre. Okay, next. The Philadelphia 76er dream is going to be James Harden, but Bradley Beal too. Like I said, the Washington Wizards don't know what direction they're going in. Maybe they just like, hey, we're okay with taking Ben Simmons in and trading everything else. I would like that for them, personally. I just want to see Ben Simmons trade. I think that's what that is. But I would also like Bradley Beal being the number two behind Joel Embiid because Joel Embiid is so good. He just needs one more like all-star caliber play on his team, and I feel super confident with him and his team. And Bradley Beal could be that guy. Bogdanovich from the Hawks. It would be weird to see Philly and Atlanta put together a big trade just because they played against each other, and Ben Simmons kind of was broken in that series against the Atlanta Hawks. And you also got Joe Ingles here. The Phoenix Suns. Josh Hart, Thad Young, Harrison Barnes. Um, Thad Young, that's like the Jalen Smith. That's Dario Sarge in a first-round pick. All of these trade options. Even the dream target doesn't seem that unrealistic in my personal opinion. The Blazers. I don't know what direction the Blazers should be going in. So this is all um, Greg Schwartz. And I know y'all can hear the voice going out too. We almost done here. Greg Schwartz said that Miles Turner, Dirk White, and Mitchell Robinson... Um, there's a lot of buzz around Mitchell Robinson and how the Knicks aren't, won't be willing to um, pay him. So maybe that makes him a trade option, um, this deadline. Next, never really realized that Alex Lynn had this tattoo on his arm. Um, Sabonis. Th yes, there are rumors about Sabonis and um, De'Aaron Fox potentially being dealt for each other. And I made a tweet that was like, do it. I don't care. Does it move the needle for either team? No. But even with the Pacers, it's get them. A, a younger point guard that's still not going to... Listen, De'Aaron Fox is good, but he's not about to mess up a potential take. He plays for the Kings. They've been taking for a decade. You feel me? Um, um, Toby and then Jordan Wara. Okay, got you. Spurs, PJ Wash, Evan Fournier, Chris Dubs, Rizingas. That would be weird to see Chris Dubs with, with Greg Popovich, but I'm here for that as well. Uh, Toronto Raptors, Jacopoto coming back. They already mentioned that they were interested in him. Um, Kobe White is a sneaky option. That's interesting to see for me. Y'all, y'all don't want OG on the Novi no more. Because if you don't want OG on the Novi no more, I'm down. Um, but no, you got Montrezl Harrell as a sneaky option just because they need good center play. And Montrezl Harrell, may, he may not be the good, great defensive player that you might need at that position, but he can give you quality minutes. He can give you quality minutes. Utah Jazz, yes, 100% agree. I said this in my last video. Jeremy Grant would be the perfect player to put on that team. It's just a matter of how do you get to that point. I don't really know. Justin Holiday and Goga Badazzi. Um, the Washington Wizards, lastly, it is John Collins, Eric Gordon, and Grant Williams. Oh, my God. My, vo my voice is going to be gone for the next three days. So, if you don't see me, <laughs> if you don't see me record a video or upload here, um, this is the reason. We had to get this video out. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like, and I'll see y'all. Peace.